The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I have an announcement, folks. Billy Ray Valentine is sick. He's got a disease called apophenia. A-P-O-P-H-E-N-I-A. -E and that means you are looking at things that are not there. It has to do with patternicity. You can look it up. In other words, you're seeing things that are not there. Well, by golly, that's exactly what's happened. I post a chart, as you can see, of the DAX, and there's the big ABCD. Uh, Steve Roach just mentioned uh, all the patterns that they're seeing on the uh, software that Tom and Dave did. Gee, there's a lot of patterns out here. There are really so many ABCDs patterns. I guess they're all going to fail, but by golly, they're still there. Let's take a look here at the FTSE. You'll see it also had an ABCD, and it's had a pretty big move. It actually uh, gapped down today. Now, remember, today is Veterans Day, folks. It's very important to remember our veterans. Uh, I was fortunate enough, that, unfortunate enough that I didn't have a chance to go into the service because I am totally deaf in one ear and uh, can't hear hardly out of the other. So, uh, But I had uh, my father and three uncles were both in uh, the, the thing, plus uh, two of my uh, other, both my grandfathers were in the service, too. But they were in World War I. That was the big war. That was a really bad war. Well, they're all bad. What are you talking about? They're, they're all terrible. Okay, let's uh, talk just a little bit uh, about something that I think we have. Norm Winsky is our guest. I, you know, folks, I have a, a, a really fun uh, hobby that I like to do, and that is I like to uh, look at the uh, – uh, oh, shucks, I lost it. Dog got it. No, no, I didn't hear it. I still have it. Just a second here. I had, I've had, well, one of them is still alive, but I had two professional gamblers, gamblers from Las Vegas as my students. They both did exactly the same thing. They bet on betting uh, discrepancies in horses at major tracks. And basically uh, what, what they do, this they look for the, the races that uh, had betting discrepancies. Now, I want to show you this one right here. This happens to be the first race. These guys don't bet until the seventh, eighth, and ninth races. And what they do is they bet on a leading jockey that is an overday. I want you to see this, folks. You see the, the, the race, the horse number three paid $28 to win. $15 to place. He should have paid $7 to show, and he paid $46 to show. Look at the next one. Played $16 to place and $57 to show. And the really easy one was this one right here that paid $23 to show. That horse was 3 to 1. And if you look at the bottom there, you'll see there were only five horses in the race. Those three plus the number two and the number five. How could this possibly happen? Well, it's number five. Number five in the betting line was three to five. In other words, for every f uh, $5 you put up, you got $8 back. However, at near the opening of the race, right before the race started, someone at, in Aqueduct there in New York put a half a million dollars to show on Pharaoh's daughter. That means he was they have to pay they have to pay 10 cents on the dollar. So he was going to get $50,000 back if that horse finished first, second, and third. <laughs> Folks, this horse got out of the gate and he broke down. He didn't even finish the race. And that's what caused these huge, huge discrepancies. I'm sure all of you heard of Secretariat. Whenever Secretariat ran after the, the Triple Crown, his odds were 210, 210, 210. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's just amazing to see something like when I saw it, I, I, I was shocked. But anyway, that's what's going on. Anyway, I thought you'd have a little interest in that. We got a big thing going with Mercury. Norm Winsky will be our guest. This is the transiting of Mercury. I'm going to bring it up to let you see what it looks like uh, in the sky. He's going to de uh, describe it to us. Doesn't happen very often. I went back and I checked to see if it had been a real spot-on thing for the stock market, highs or lows. I have not seen that at all. Uh, so I don't know if this is going to mean much for the stock market, but I'm, well, it probably will. I don't know. It might not be spot on, but it it's probably means something. But we do have the, the full moon, and boy, it's certainly full here out in the desert today. It, it's really beautiful. All right. 
Uh, let's move on to the, uh, I showed the DAX. Uh, you know, folks, there's so many of these patterns that I just don't know which one to show first, but I think the easiest one to describe most of it is this one right here. This is the cash S&P index. As you can see here, we have, uh, uh, since May, you know, we came down in May, we went up into July, came down into August, topped on the, we topped on the full moon of the 13th of September. We came down for two weeks, stopping right at almost exactly the 78% level, and then went up and made a new high. But we've left a gap there, folks. You see, we left a weekly gap, which is going to be filled. I don't know if it'll be filled in my lifetime or not, but it'll be filled. But you've got the numbers there. Uh, you can see the three drive to a top pattern, the double ABCD. Uh, and that, that's in everything, folks, with the exception of the Russell. Uh, it hasn't uh, quite made the uh, that higher level, but it's still made an ABCD pattern. So those are just a few of the ones that we're looking at here this morning. Now, I had one other one that I think is relatively important, uh, and that is the uh, gold market. Let's just take a quick, let's do it through the eyes of the GLD, okay? This is the ETF for gold. All right, we're going to get this up here. And take a look at the, if you get the weekly letter, take a look at the gold chart and the silver chart. They got some great stuff in here. Here we are over the last uh, 18 months. You'll notice that uh, we had a nice bottom back there in November. You'll see that one. You can see that bottom was around uh, 114. We had the rally up. And then we had the, the, the first major uh, ABCD correction. You see that one that came in in May. It, that from the high to the low was 48 days. Folks, the high that we made here on September the 3rd, to where we are today is 48 days. So we're looking for a low to come in here on gold this week. That's what it looks like. And it's gonna if it comes in at this level, at the 382 level, which comes in at 1448, that's 12 bucks and where we are right now, that is gonna be a 382 retracement with an ABCD pattern in a bull market. And uh, Gartley said on page 221 and 222 is look for those patterns because they have big payoffs. They don't always pay off, but when they do, they do pay off. So just keep that one in mind. Very, very uh, important in my opinion. The other one, Rich Anderson forwarded on something to us today that we usually get from uh, Dennis Gartman. Rich was a little early today, so I'll bring this up to your attention, and that is the, the Fear Greed Index has now reached 91. That's in the, the extreme uh, category. So whether that's going to mean anything or not, I don't know, but we'll pay attention to that, of course. And then, of course, if we look at the very famous that people look at, which is the uh, put-call ratio, and I think I have that here. I believe I do. Yep, uh, here we do. We get this up here and take a look at it. You'll see that the put-call ratio is also setting at a near record. It's, oh, yeah, it, we took out the low of July. Uh, we didn't take out the low of April, but it's uh, been a pretty big move. You can see that it has a tr uh, reverse. In other words, as this goes, as your put call ratio goes down, stocks go up. So if this put call ratio turns, that means stocks go down. Whether they do or not, you know, remains to be seen. So let's take a break. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, the bonds are closed today. Uh, however, they were trading last night, uh, Sunday night, and they closed near the high end of the range at uh, 156, uh, what was it, 156.28, I believe. So uh, that's uh, slightly positive. The first chart that you're seeing here comes from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Someone put the channel lines in there uh, for them to take a look at it uh, to show you what's been happening. And this, the title of this, On the Rise, is that uh, the Treasury yields are starting to rise. Well, that might be true, and I think they are going to rise longer term. But if we go just one step farther and do some of the things that we do here, uh, looking at these patterns with our apophenia uh, disease. <laughs> Hold on just a second, folks. Let's just get up here, and you'll see here. Uh, there we go. You'll see we have completed an ABCD up in here, which means the bonds should start to rally, just the exact opposite of what the Federal Reserve boys are saying. So we'll see. I really think that we've made a, a major high in the Treasury bond market, folks. I believe negative interest rates is going to come back and bite some people on the kabuki, but, you know, that's that's neither, neither here nor there. And, of course, it's just my opinion. That's uh, always remember that. If you remember, folks, last Wednesday we were talking about one of the markets that uh, we were involved in that uh, had a really nice payoff, and that was the natural gas. Let's get this up here because something happened about natural gas last night is that we uh, got all the way up to the ABCD structure. And if you remember, that was a, a uh, just a perfect one, by the way. We had two major gaps in there, but it was sitting right at the number. And, and it uh, was came down then last night we was down 10 cents at one time and we've got down uh, we've got down to the 382 this morning folks at 264 that that might be some support I don't know if it's going to hold or not so far that low has been 264 but um, you know the fact that that ABCD is on you want to look for a place to buy it now the only thing you have to buy that on if you're buying it on the 260 at 264 is the 382 retracement and as you know we like to have several things present you know you like to have a ratio or two, preferably three, like you do here where the top was made on September 3rd. You can see the ratios that we had there. But on this particular case, all we have is the 382. There's something good about that, too, is that if you're going to buy it at 264, you don't have to risk very much because if it goes to 260, which is a $4 risk, you're certainly wrong. 
And uh, so that's the way I would handle that. If you really a bullish natural gas and with the cold weather that we're having, holy moly, whatever happened to climate uh, change things. My gosh, the 70% the, the of the United States is 30% below normal. That's uh, And they got snow in a lot of different places. Uh, it was 75 Saturday in Denver where my daughter lives and it's, got, it's snowing today. So, or at least she said it was supposed to snow today. So anyway, these are crazy things going on out there. So take a look at that. Anyway, next move on to the next one that we want to talk about. We took care of the natural gas and we want to go, oh, here's one interesting one that Rich said. I don't follow the fundamental stuff, but this is, uh, I guess, very similar to that, uh, oh, what do they call that index? Freight index. I don't, or what do they call that uh, uh, index that they use for the freight in, uh, for the ships and stuff. I can't remember. Anyway, let's get this up here and take a look. This is the one for freights. Uh, this is a CAS freight index, and it just shows the year-over-year -year shipments. That you know, the, the, this is going the opposite of the stock market, folks. I don't know where these guys get their data, but there must be somebody buying something somewhere because, and they're certainly buying it in China. In China, you can see Alibaba's sales day, the Baltic Dry Index. Thank you, David. The Mr. Encyclopedia comes through again. The Baltic Dry. I haven't looked at that Baltic Dry Index since. Uh, I think 2007. That was probably the last time I looked at it. So, on to the next one. By the way, 877-927-6648. That's what we're liking to see. Someone asked a question uh, by email. It was about the FANG stocks. And of the five FANG stocks, there are only two of them that have continued to go higher. Apple got up to 260. And as you know, we were looking for uh, Apple you know, to get to a uh, price of... Uh, Wow. Two, let's get this up here. Hold on. We'll be able to see. Wow. Holy cow. It got there on that weekly basis. I didn't even know that. Let's get that up here. Here's a uh Oh, I must have did it because I did the chart myself. Folks, I am changing data. So if those of you that get my stuff every day, if you start seeing uh, lapses or something, it's because my data, I'm switching from eSignal to DTN, and uh, it's not an easy thing because the, the symbols are all different, and uh, i got to do a lot of work to get that done. I haven't got it finished yet. But you can see here that we've completed the big ABCD pattern on the weekly. That came, we, 260. I was thinking 245 was going to be it, but uh, it's gone up to, to the 260 level, trading at 258 uh, tonight. So I don't know if that means anything or not. But well, I've never seen so many patterns completed. The last time I saw this many patterns completed was in 2000 during the dot-com bubble. Yeah, in 2007, you didn't quite see that much. It was grinding up, and it didn't uh, didn't do the same as 2000. But 2000 was a generational thing because we won't. I will never see anything like that. You young folks will, but that's not going to happen again for quite some time. Where we have a dot com uh, bubble like that, where the Nasdaq gave 86 percent of its value back over a, a two-year period. Uh, also, those of you that, oh, here's something that I needed to cover, and I'm going to be able to do it before Norm comes on. Here is the thing about impeachment. Let's just get this up. This comes from our good friends at the uh, Elliott Wave Technicians. One of our friends sent it on to us. And if you notice here, this was the during the uh, Andrew Johnson. You see, Andrew, the stock market was going up into Andrew Johnson's thing. That means that he had a really good chance of not being impeached. That's what they said in their socioeconomic thing. Now we do the next one, which, of course, would be William Jefferson Clinton. Let's get that. Oh, I should have done Nixon first, but I got Clinton up here, so let's just do it. Here's WJC. And as you can see, the stock market was going up uh, all during that time. He also wasn't impeached. And the la and this, of course, Nixon, he was impeached. And let me show you why. And let me show you why. Here's Nixon. We had a negative mood in the market. And uh, you'll see here that uh, this is when uh, Mr. Nixon uh, was. I should blow this up and then make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it better. Yeah, there we go. Hold on. I, you know, folks, it's just interesting that they bring this up because of the fact that it's related to the stock market somewhat, but you certainly can't do any timing. Yes, David, that dollar index is, uh, has been a major move here off of that 97 low, and we're at some critical critical levels there. So what, what they're saying is here, if the stock market is up in these next few months, the odds of uh, 
President uh, Trump being impeached will be lower. But uh, that's we, that's up for the political gods to do that. Now, we're going to have Norm Winsky as our guest here at the break, and uh, he'll ha answer some questions for us, as always, and tell us some of the things that he sees in the market, and uh, we'll be happy to do that. I'm hoping to have Tim Bost as a guest uh, later in this week. And boy, don't miss Wednesday's show, because Wednesday's the highlight of the week for me, because I get to interview my very, very dear friend, Dr. Steve Shapiro. And uh, Steve was with me all the way from 1985 uh, till this day. And uh, we had a lot of fun. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have a caller, Bill, from Florida on the line. Bill, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning, Larry. Good morning. What can I help you with, my friend? Uh, I want to get your thoughts on the Dow. I know that. 1550 level, the 50, uh, 500 level really, um, a 55 level has, it's really come off and, you know, the, the, it's come down considerably from there. Any thoughts on a, on a projection as to where the Dow might end up on the, on the low side? 
Oh, dude, it's so early. I mean, I'd like to see it be down on the day <laughs> to start off with. It's too early, Bill. I really don't know. Maybe Norm will give us some ideas, but I, it's too early. It really is. You just can't say anything to to be this early on a Monday, especially with the full moon, uh, you know, coming in here tomorrow. So I think in a day or two, if it's down, we'll have some better ideas. But my guess is, just guess, would be at least 300 points off the top because we haven't had any correction at all for a month. So that would be my guess. So you're holding your position, Larry, with the with the stop. That's uh, okay. Very good. Yeah, that's basically what I'm looking at, my friend. All right, we got okay. Norm Winsky on. Perfect. Yeah, thanks Thank a lot, you. Bill, for calling in. We always appreciate it, and we have Norm Winsky on the line now. Is that correct? I don't hear Norm. Where's the sound of one hand clapping? Norm, are you there? You hear me? Okay. I hear you perfectly. You have the mic. You're in control. Go. We we do have one one uh, request, and that is explain about this Mercury transit, what it means. I'm, I'm going to do that. What's that? Uh, you got some noise on the line there. Now. Uh, I'm not doing anything different, so I hope it's okay. Can you hear so, that? That's like so I'm busy on somebody's line. There we go. Right. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it's... Hopefully uh, you can get rid of that noise. Anyway, so I uh, got my notes on the screen here now, and I recommend. Oh right, boy, can you hear that? I don't hear anything, Norm. Uh -uh. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds like somebody's uh, the the last. Yeah, maybe Bill did. Maybe Bill didn't hang up his phone, but I don't think he would have done That's that. That's it. So. Ah, uh -huh. there it is. No noise. That's what it was. There you go. He's in Florida, so he's probably waiting to talk to you, too. So who knows? <laughs> I can barely hear you over the noise there, Larry. Sorry, Norm. There's nothing else I can do about it, buddy. I wish there was, but I really can't. There's no noise anywhere else. Can you keep continuing? Right. Is the noise gone now? Well, I, I can hear it. Maybe you can. I don't know. Sounds like somebody's phone is off the hook, you know? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't hear it. Nobody else does either. So maybe just connect maybe, the last guy. You know, there we uh, go. He's already he's already disconnected. So all right, there we go. So anyway, I got my notes on the screen here. The first page is the key to all the charts I'm going to show you. And uh, so take a screenshot of this now if you can, and that will help you. You can look at the so the the basics are that the commodities tend to be associated with a particular sign or particular planet. For example, Taurus the bull. It's associated with cattle, and that ruling planet is Venus. So those two factors are the big factor for cattle. So that's kind of the general pattern here. Uh, different signs, different planets go with different uh, different, uh, different mm -hmm. signs, different planets go with different commodities. Uh, stock market responds to everything. And, the, and then we also have the U.S. natal. That's we take a snapshot of when something began, like when the U.S. began on July the 4th, 1776, and look at where the planets are now compared to, to those planets, okay? So now I'm gonna go through these charts very quickly. Uh, the, the trading rules are, if we look for reversal, so we're looking to sell on strength or buy on weakness, if the market goes up into one of our key dates, uh, then we'll be looking to sell. If it goes down into one of our key dates, we'll be looking to buy. It works about 70% of the time. And, some, and then was, sometimes we get an acceleration, that's about 15% of the time. And then sometimes we're wrong, you know. Uh, AC on my uh, screen here, that's after the close. That means something's happening overnight. We look to trade on the next morning's opening. So here's cattle. I had Venus, uh, a key a Venus point there the night of the 24th. That's a miss. That's a red arrow. Here's Coco. We did a lot better on Coco. We had, that's a Scorpio-Pluto market. And we rallied up into the, the, we had a new moon in Scorpio there. Uh, oh wait, that was that's uh, yeah, that's right. The the night the weekend of the 24th, 25th, and there we go. We had a top there the weekend of the 20, right around the 25th, and then we also had a top there with Mercury going retrograde in Scorpio on the 31st, and then we also had Saturn lining up with Pluto on the night of the 4th. So that those worked nicely for Coco. Uh, we had Saturn lining up with Pluto again in Capricorn. Saturn and Capricorn are coffee. So I'm giving away all my secrets here now, all the stuff that works. And so there we go. It, it did not work well for coffee. The coffee just kept going. Here, copper's also a miss there on the Venus event there. We had the night of the 24th. Here's corn. That worked pretty well. 
we had uh, the new new moon, and uh, one day later, a few pennies lower, we were at the bottom of the corn market for a temporary low anyway, and then we popped up into Mercury turning retrograde. The grains like the moon and Mercury. Mercury turning retrograde the morning of the 31st, and that was a top. Air corn, if the market's going sides, we, sideways, we do nothing. Newton's law, for every action, there's an opposite equal reaction. That's what happened here. It went sideways before our date, and it went sideways after our date. Do nothing there. You're going sideways. We're going up in the gold. There you go. You're making a top there in the gold right on the moon, on the new moon. And it topped out, and we had a chance to make some money. Here's hogs. We're going sideways into our first state with uh, the new moon in Scorpio. Hogs are Scorpio market. And so that we do nothing. But over here, when the mercury goes retrograde in Scorpio, you had a little bit of a top there, and we went down for a few days. Then we made a bottom on the Saturn-Pluto alignment. Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. And there we go. We made a little low there and had a nice pop-up. Here's oil. Had a very nice turn there with Jupiter to the U.S. Neptune. <coughs> Neptune is oil. And there's a nice top there on the oil. Here's silver. There's your moon, the new moon in Scorpio on the week over the weekend of the 25th. And that topped out there. And then we went down, pretty much went down for, for silver. Here's your beans. Beans did not respond to the new moon very well. You would have taken a small loss you, over here, though, when Mercury turned retrograde. Uh, that was a nice low on the beans, and then you went up. Here's your S&P. We're going sideways into our first big window. The new moon window there was pretty much sideways, so we do nothing. Uh, we had a big cluster here over the uh, 20. Oh, that was uh, the night of the 24th. Had another big cluster the weekend of the 25th. <clears throat> that would uh, you would have might have lost a little bit of money there. You can see it went up a little bit. And then we got here though to this window. Mercury turning retrograde. That was a nice little uh, short-term top there. And we had a big down that day. We had another top here due the night of the 4th, and that was a nice top there. And then we had another window due on the 6th. That was a low and so forth. So, uh, by the way, if you count up all these green arrows and red arrows, I think in the when we get done here, i got a lot more green arrows and red arrows. Here's sugar. I bent the rules a little bit. I'm supposed to be right within one day. This uh, low, though, was a three-day, kind of a three-day low. We had your low over there, and then we're only 15 points away from the bottom there on the third day when our window was to get in to go long. So that worked out okay. Here's your T-bonds. Uh, pretty good on the T-bonds. We're going sideways into our first window the night of the, the 24th. Here's your uh, weekend uh, window with the moon. We had a triple signal there. Look to do something on that, and that was on the opening. So you would have been looking to do something there. Uh, and uh, that worked out to be a pretty good bottom there. And then we rallied up till the Mercury so Scorpio is bonds. And so we went retrograde, uh, Mercury went retrograde the 31st, made a top, and then we're coming down. We had a miss there on the night of the 4th. But then we had a little pop up here on the 6th. And then now we're looking for what's going to happen coming up here this weekend. Here's the wheat, went sideways into our first window, made a nice yes, low there. On the, going is okay, we've oh, got to pay a few bills now, Norm, okay? Okay. Uh, I, yes, I think there's a little, there's a little mix up somewhere in year, Norm. 6200 over the four year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back with Norm Winsky. Norm, you want to continue, please? Yes, sir. We jumped off of wheat. I was saying that wheat came down into the mercury retrograde the morning of the 31st, and we made a nice flow there, and then we went up. Here's your dollar. I had several signals there. I had something for the night of the 24th. We were just a day early on the top, and over the weekend with the new, with the new moon and several other things involving the U.S. chart, we had a triple signal there, and then we kind of made a top there for the dollar. Later on, we the, night, the morning of the 6th, we had a possible signal there, and that went nowhere. And now we're waiting to see what's going to happen here with the uh, big lineup here we have right now. We'll be talking about that in a minute. I've often talked about the currencies dance to the moon, and there you go. They had a nice uh, lineup here back on the new moon on the weekend of the 25th. And there's your Aussie dollar making a slow there. And there's your British pound making a low there on the same time. There's your euro making a low there. Japanese yen was going sideways, so we would have done nothing. All right, there we go. Now we're at the planetary index, uh, kind of like your Bradley model type chart, but I do, I've changed it a lot. And there's a the blue line. I draw that a couple of weeks in advance of the month. Here's for October, starting on September 30th, running right to Friday the 25th. And you can see that worked out pretty nicely. There's your new moon there on the 25th. That was the top, and it plunged down into Mercury going direct. The morning of the third, that was the kind of defined the two weeks of the market action there with that high and that low. There's your full moon there in the middle of the month. And then we have the end of, at the 25th weekend, you had Venus near there. You had v Venus zero south latitude and the new moon. Anyway, that worked out pretty nicely. Now I'm going to show you some stuff I haven't shown you for a while. Fractals. I do fractals. Don't need any fancy formulas. I can teach a 10-year-old to do this in 10 minutes. Just take the January price section. Stretch it out for the year, and you got the forecast for the year uh, as of February. So there we go. I did this back in February. You can see the S&P is falling its fractal pretty nicely. And sometimes these do invert, though. So here's your bonds inverted. And it's at the high of the year, which occur around mid to late August. And that so far has been the correct. And then bonds are due to go down into the end of the year. And the stock market is due to go up into the end of the year, as you can see on this chart right there so now we're going to look ahead i think we're ready to look ahead to the future here we go here's what's coming here's what's happening right now and in the next one to two days well, over the weekend we had mercury at zero north latitude that's why you'll see in the some press uh media coverage on the, this is what is required for the mercury to go across the face of the sun, you have to have the mercury, as I understand it, in the middle there at zero north latitude. And it's mercury's lined up a whole bunch of stuff here. Well, again, this was the high, my highest, the one to two days here, highest energy on my calendar. I have a calendar of all these markets on the planetary activity. Highest energy window for the next one to two days. So big, you know, we should have an important change of trend, maybe a major change of trend 
for your corn, oats, soybeans, stocks, and wheat. Full moon tonight, early, actually early tomorrow morning in Taurus. So we're going to watch for our financials, grains, precious metals. And because it is in Taurus, we're going to be watching the stocks, cattle, and cotton. Then later in the next weekend, we have Mercury at Perihelion. So we got a big cluster here over this weekend and for the next one to two days for impossible change in trend. This uh, next uh, lineup uh, we're with Mercury there across the face of the sun won't occur until 2032, I believe. That's what they're saying. All right, and here's how to get a hold of me. Uh, here's a reminder. My, I just had my 41st anniversary for this letter. I started doing this back in 1978, and I've done this every month for 41 years. Never missed a deadline. I got free classes. You get free uh, trial subscriptions, and I teach you how to do some of this stuff all for free. The fractal thing, I can teach in 10 minutes. It's amazing. I got it done for 24, 25 other markets. Here's my contact information. If you're not seeing this, uh, I'll just read this off real quick. I'm in Naples, Florida, 239-594-3939. And Winsky, EmbarkMail.com, and you can call me on Skype at Winsky underscore one, I think we might have time for questions, Larry. Well, hopefully they'll call in. Uh, we're going to be looking at 877-927-6648. If anybody has a question, let's see if we see anything in the thing there. Yes, yeah, someone's asking me a question is, why is it that the Bradley model inverts, Norm? Uh, my theory on that, and I've uh, in my charts, I, I, I adjust for that. Uh, I think it happens when you have those two categories when plants go direct or retrograde that that can invert the polarity of the energy so you can go if you got positive energy it can take a positive energy turn it negative or vice versa also that tends to happen when the plants get to zero latitude that's my theory it's been working quite well for me uh, Bradley never addressed that at all never mentioned anything about plants going direct or retrograde Okay, that makes sense enough. We have another question is, how important is mercury transiting across the sun? Because someone mentioned that that was one of the things that Einstein used when he proved the theory of relativity. Do you know anything about that? Uh, the Einstein thing would be way over, as you would say, Larry, way yeah, over my way pay, over grade. Grade, pay grade. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, that's uh, good. All I do is I look at these stuff on a kind of a short-term basis and how what are the markets doing, how are the markets responding, if you see a, if you see you know, Mercury is the grains, if you see the grains having a big move here uh, today, uh, mm -hmm. then they're probably going to a good chance you'll get a reversal here in the next day or so. You know, right? that's what the kind of thing we're looking for. You know. Okay. Now, I just one of, final question here is: uh, What is the importance of the zero declinations? Uh, uh, zero declination is important. Also, zero latitude. That's just sort of an energy point in the planets. I don't know what the physics of that is. I just know that the markets tend to respond to that a lot of the time, you know. Okay. Okay. How can the folks reach you, Norm? Uh, right there at the bottom of the uh, on the screen there. Hopefully they can see that. There's my contact in sunny Naples, Florida, 239-594-3939, and Whiskey EmbarkMail.com. There's my Skype, and Whiskey underscore digit one. Looking forward to helping some of your Folks, Larry, call me right away before I get busy doing the next month's letter. Okay, Norm, someone's asking a question. Any key dates in gold that you see? Yes, uh, we got the moon. We got the moon early tomorrow morning. The, okay. As I showed you on the charts, sir, that's why I show those charts, mm -hmm. is so you can see what past patterns, uh, how mm -hmm. the markets respond, and these are many of these are repeating cycles, so you can mm -hmm. make money on them when they occur again. And the, <laughs> and the precious metals dance to the moon. They certainly do. Norm, thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll have you on again soon, and may God bless and be safe down there. Okay, great. Thank you very okay. much, Larry. I hope, you bet. I hope everybody has a great day. We will. That was Norm Winsky, folks, of Astro Ten Trends, and we'll have him back on again one of these days very soon. We do have that full moon tomorrow, and, of course, we have that Mercury transiting uh, today, and I was watching picture of it on uh, 
the uh, uh, Bloomberg this morning, and it was really amazing to see the little black spot go across uh, the the face of the moon. It was really spectacular. I, I just uh, it's really amazing. Um, uh, Mr. Z, uh, uh, Mr. Z is asking about soybean futures. You know, uh, John, they look bearish to me. You know, they really do. They, they, I don't know what they're doing so far this morning, but they do look bearish to me. So I'm just uh, thinking that that might be, uh, you know, in the down. But I, I don't know. You can see it in the, in the newsletter uh, for the uh, futures. It shows that it probably is going to go lower, but we'll wait and see here. So we'll take a break here, 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed. And I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're trying to answer our question to Mr. Z about the soybeans. This is the March soybean contract. That's the one I'm following. Uh, if you'll notice, back in May, we had a nice ABCD pattern, and it went up and made a high there in June, came down right down to the 61% retracement, made a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful butterfly pattern there. Excuse me, that was a guard. Actually, it was a butterfly because we took out the low of X by half a cent, and then we had the big ABCD that took us up to the highs up there at 9 cents. 
70. And as you can see here, we are looking at a market that's set up to do a beautiful ABCD to the downside, down about another 17 cents, uh, let's say 20 cents, down to uh, 9.22. We're trading a little lower this morning, but uh, that's what it looks like. Any move above 9.60, of course, would negate this pattern, but right now it's set up uh, looking like that's what it wants to do. I mean, it's made an ABCD to the upside, uh, ended there on uh, October the 21st. We came down over a three-day period. We rallied up to the 50% retracement, and now it looks like we're heading down to that 50% uh, uh, retracement of the move from uh, September 9th. It's also 78% retracement of the move from uh, uh, September the uh, 23rd. So you have double numbers there in the March soybeans at 922. So that's what I'm watching to see if it's going to uh, get to that level. Whether it does or not, we really don't know. Uh, the red box on the bean chart was basically Marshall. I was trying to show the folks that it stayed at that area for six or seven days. You know, that means there's a lot of distribution going on up in there. That's why I highlighted it because, you know, it's not one of those periods where you're going up and down above the box, below the box. So it was just in that zone. Uh, it's usually a 10 to 15 cent range and that usually 17 cents because uh, the harmonic number in soybeans is 18 and 36. So that's what it'll usually do. And once it comes out of that box, that's why it's so important. I thought I'd cover that, but evidently I didn't. But you'll see that occasionally, and we'll see. The other one to watch this week, folks, is the hogs, because, uh, you know, the, the inflation, inflation in Japan has went crazy, and they're saying because of hogs, well, they're not buying our hogs very much. You can see that. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.